Evening, everybody. Welcome to our first podcast on photosynthesis. This is the second third of our energetics unit. Um, the last part uh, will be uh, revolving all around cell respiration. So first and foremost, we're going to get into talking about photosynthesis. And this is the process by which we transfer the light energy that hits the planet into usable chemical energy um, that sustains all life on earth. So let's get a little bit of some understanding on before we get going here. The difference between autotrophs versus heterotrophs. Uh, once again, I'm gonna really draw your focus to terminology. Um, we look at the prefix auto, um, and if you already know what that means, bravo for you, but auto, like automatic, autobiography, uh, means self. Okay, hetero, this is a term that will come up all over the place, and this term uh, means different. Um, so we gotta get a little bit of knowledge about some of this terminology. Um, so we have autotroph and altroph, it refers to trophic, that means energy. So we have organisms that are dubbed as autotrophic, and we have or organisms that are dubbed as heterotrophic. And our autotrophic organisms are the ones that can um, basically go through the process of converting light into usable chemical energy. In other words, they can make their own food. Uh, heterotrophs, uh, these are organisms that require their energy from a different source, uh, in which case these are organisms that have to consume other living things in order to gain the chemical energy that they need. Autotrophs, your producers, your plants, your photosynthetic organisms, heterotrophs, big example, you're looking at it, people, okay, uh, your consumers, these are the heterotrophs. So let's get a sense of a little bit on the circle of life here. Um, pretty much the survival of almost all organisms on the planet depend on photosynthesis. Now, if you remember our video on the deep, there are critters way, way down there in the hot springs in the depths of the ocean where light is completely devoid that um, depend on other organisms to provide them with the energy they need. But for the majority, we all depend on those that photosynthesize. So the energy comes in from the sun. Uh, note the size of this arrow here, okay? Big fat arrow, lots of energy comes in. We get all of our photoautotrophs that are here that are going to convert um, that energy by storing it into a chemical form and then it gets passed on to the heterotrophs and the decomposers and sent out. And notice the size of the arrows are shrinking through these transfers. That's because most of the energy gets lost as it moves through. I also want you to take note of the pathway. Okay, energy is a one-way street. Okay, this pathway, um, once we transfer energy, it's gone. We started talking about this a little bit in the first third of the unit. Um, and so it constantly needs to be put in um, to our closed system here, our planet, right? So the sun does that for us. It is our continual supply of energy. Now matter though, on the other hand, can cycle around, okay? We can use and reuse the molecules, the stuff um, over and over again. Um, so photosynthesis, that's where we're gonna use this part here where we're going to promote the production um, of those chemical molecules that store sunlight energy. Um, but while it's an energy storing pathway, um, don't confuse it with cell respiration. It's kind of a different process. Um, I also want you guys to take note of the fact that energy flows, matter, or the nutrients can cycle. And here is your ever, or what will become your ever favorite equation. Now, one thing I wanna just kind of point out to you is I kinda wanna take this and bundle it up with the arrow, okay? I don't want you guys to get confused with energy being something. It's, you know, it's not matter. It's not technically part of the reaction. It really, that word energy should sit on top of the arrow, not appear to be part of the reaction. But in the reaction of photosynthesis, we take water, 
okay, as our matter. We take carbon dioxide, our matter. Note that these are both two inorganic molecules. Now in the presence of sunlight, which is what this energy is, the sun, okay, we can put out from 12 molecules of water, six molecules of carbon dioxide, we can make ourselves, drum roll please, one big happy molecule of glucose, C6H12O6. And then we are gonna spit out oxygen and water as a byproduct. But the key thing is the creation or the synthesis of this um, one glucose molecule, which is an organic molecule. Photosynthesis and cell respiration are very intently linked with one another. Um, they uh, piggyback off of each other. They create sort of um, our sort of cycle of life as a result. Um, we first start out at, if you will, the sort of um, foundation level of the food chain with our photosynthesizers who take the sunlight, who transfer it into chemical energy, um, thus creating um, the matter and the stuff that then the next levels of consumers eat, okay? And fortunately for us, the photosynthesizers are putting out oxygen, they're putting out water, which we as um, cell respirators need uh, to take in oxygen, so yay for us, and then we as cell respirators spit out carbon dioxide, which then the plants can take in and all the other photosynthesizers can take in for photosynthesis. So it's a constant circle of life that we have going on there. Um, one thing I really want to stress with you guys is the fact that it's really a very, very small amount of the actual sunlight that comes in from the planet that actually fuse photosynthesis. There's very particular sections of the spectrum. Um, and if, if you've ever taken a prism or you've seen a rainbow, we know that light um, is made up of multiple wavelengths and those wavelengths um, basically reflect different colors. And so the photosynthetic organisms only utilize a fraction of the visible light because all light is made up of different types of radiation and different rays and different wavelengths that these um, plants and photosynthesizers don't even use. So uh, with that, I'm going to break off here as our introduction to photosynthesis. In the next vodcast, we'll get into what's actually going on inside the cell and inside the chloroplast. So have a fabulous evening and look forward to the second photosynthesis vodcast. It'll be coming to a computer near you. So take care, gang, and we'll see you guys later on.